I'm afraid. Oh, all right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be doing guided notes over quick breaths today. So everybody, go ahead, grab some guided notes in the back page, back table. Yes, sir. If you'd rather do them uh, digitally, they are available for you in Canvas. You have to pretend to be normal students for exactly 15 minutes. 15? I don't know, maybe we'll stretch out to 20, who knows? That's too long. That's too long? All right, let's meet in the middle. It's called 17 minutes. All right, y'all. So give me your very best guess on what you think a quick bread might be. Bread. Bread that's quick. Bread that's quick. Bread that's quick. Bread that's quick. It is not an unleavened bread. I don't even know what that means. You're close, but it's not an unleavened bread. Quick breads are, really? I heard some, some correct answers. Breads that are quick, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Muffins, absolutely fall in that category. Biscuits. Croissants? Croissants. No. No, <laughs> no, croissants are not a, a quick bread. Croissants are incredibly time consuming. Uh, and also like physically demanding. Like really if you make croissants, your forearm's gonna get blasted. Yes, it absolutely is. Because you got to roll and fold and roll and fold and roll and fold. All right. So when I'm talking about quick breads, not unleavened, but not naturally leavened. You were close, but you did not get the cigar. So what I'm talking about, a leavening agent. I'm talking about anything that's going to make your bread rise. Rise. Rise from the grave, like a pharaoh or a monk. So traditionally. That's going to be yeast. Activate yeast into our uh, into our bread, makes it rise. But that takes time. I got to put it in the right temperature of water. I got to give it sugar. I got to let the yeast eat. I got to introduce it to the dough. Then I got to leave the dough covered. And then I got to let the dough rise. Then I got to punch the dough down. And then I can cook my yeast dough. But I don't want to go through all that steps. So I'm going to do something else with chemical leavening. Quick breads. Are anything, any breads that I use a chemical leavener? Try that out here. Here's where you can jump in. What is an example of a chemical leavener? Baking soda and powder. Baking soda and baking powder for extra juicy crepe. Do you know the difference between the two? Uh, baking soda. Wait, one of them is written in water, but you're saying underneath garbage. <laughs> That's gonna be uh, baking soda. Uh, no. No. So baking soda and baking powder are gonna have uh, a lot of the same functions. The only difference is is that baking powder contains baking soda, but it also contains like cream of tartar and something else. Uh, <clears throat> That's all right. My genius will be around for years to come. <laughs> so, funny, man. <laughs> right. so uh, <clears throat> just shooting from the hip, what do we think the primary difference between our quick breads and our other category, our yeast breads, are? Let's talk texture first. Crumbly. Crumbly. Which one's crumbly? Like quick breads are crumbly. Quick breads are crumbly, absolutely. And like long ago, they're chewy. Yeah, that's exactly right. If I if I got a yeast bread, I'm gonna be taking the time, I'm gonna be putting forth actual physical effort to activate the gluten. That's gonna make it a lot chewier. It's gonna activate those strands of protein. You ever break an egg open like a like a roll and you see sort of those like web patterns inside? That's that gluten giving you a nice formation. That's giving you a lot of a lot of texture, a lot of structure. Quick breads do not have that. Rule of thumb, if you can karate chop it and it falls apart, that's a quick bread. Well, I can because I'm a karate master. And then that's where you say, oh, you're so funny, Teach. You're so funny, Teach. <laughs> 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 LMAO. LMAO. 
can begin in two distinct forms, either a dough or a batter. Where are you cooking biscuits uh, Wednesday and Thursday? That's gonna be our dough. Same thing with scones. Muffins, pancakes, waffles, crepes, and cream puffs begin as batters. But, of course, not all batters are quick breads. Anybody give me an example of uh, something that starts off as a batter that is not a quick bread? <coughs> something I would not use a leavening agent in? Pancake? What's that? No, 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 Cheesecake. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, I would absolutely not use leavening agent in the cheesecake. Ice cream? Ice cream? Oh, I cream. Wait, what? I think you remember talking about like stuff that starts as a liquid and then. Well, yeah. I guess if you squint, ice cream kind of starts as a batter. That's not untrue. Ice cream starts as a batter. Kind of. Yeah, like a little. It do a bit of All right, let's think about what Jorge said earlier. Quality quick breads are light and tender with a soft texture. It should be crumbly, it should easily fall apart. Quick breads are never, ever, ever gonna fight you. Let's think about the muffin. Light, tender, and soft. That exactly describes a muffin, doesn't it? It's essentially a cake that's not quite a cake yet. It's not good at I su yeah, Daria raises a good point. If I do char my muffins to a crisp, it's no longer going to be light, tender, and soft. Or you cement Or if I mix cement mix into my muffins, also not going to be light, tender, and soft. You guys are really getting a hang of this. <laughs> you guys are absolutely going to kill me. All right. <laughs> So, this is probably the most important slide in the entire uh, PowerPoint. I want y'all to pay most attention to this final point right here. Minimal mixing prevents excess gluten formation. Remember when I talked about uh, yeast spreads earlier? Yes. Yes. When I apply pressure to it, when I mix it, when I actually get in there with my physical hands and I start mixing it and folding it and pressing it, what am I doing? I'm activating that gluten. I'm making it tough. The more I mix something, the more that gluten is going to activate, the tougher the texture is going to be. Exactly. You can't mix it too much. So, this is why quick breads are like an excellent intro into cooking. Because most of the time it's about, it's about instinct and confidence, right? If you aren't totally sure that you've mixed your dough properly, what are you going to do? You're probably going to keep on mixing it. But at a certain point, you just have to say, I've mixed this enough, and i got to walk away. Low gluten flours provide the structure. Again, I want something that's going to give me that light crumbly texture. If i got a flour that has a ton of gluten structures in it, I'm not going to get the right texture. And then this word here, shortening. Anyone know what shortening is? Tell me. It's Crisco. It's Crisco, yeah. So, Shortening is a substitute for any solid fat. So your butters, your margarines, things like that. Uh, rule of thumb, 99% of the time, if you see shortening or Crisco in a recipe, you can pretty handle replace it with butter or margarine. That's gonna give you a slightly different texture, a slightly different flavor. Um, but shortening is absolutely fantastic in a pinch. We're going to talk about the mixing methods next. So most uh, most quick breads sort of have their own little twist on the mixing method. Uh, we're going to go over the biscuit method here in a second. Uh, muffins got their own method. Y'all ever had fritter before? No. Yes. Not fritter. <laughs> what is fritters? Uh, it's, how, how do I describe a fritter? That's interesting. It's, it's yeah, sort of, never heard of it. get it like a, like a donut short, like an apple fritter. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. 
I can't describe a fruit. That's why. I don't try fruit. They're good. Ooh, like a donut, but a pie, but a donut. Okay. Yeah, it's like a donut, but a pie, but a donut. It's good. I like fruit. I love fruit. Alright, so there's going to be a specific kind of flour that we're looking out for. Uh, again, soft wheat, little gluten, high starch content, that's going to give us the right structure. But there is something that we need to look out for because there's technically two kinds of special flour that is often used in biscuits. And we need to make sure that we know which one we have. Whenever you buy a basket, uh, a bag of flour for biscuits, make sure that you are aware whether you've got self-rising or not. Self-rising is already gonna have leavening agent in it. So if you don't know if you got self-rising flour, you're gonna add more leavening agent and your biscuits are gonna explode. You're gonna what? Have explode. Oh. All right. So when we're preparing our biscuits, step one, we're gonna weigh all of our ingredients carefully. That's what we did in uh, in yesterday's lab. What's up? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> we go to the slide. B E J U plus one. All right, why is it crucial, absolutely crucial, that we sift all of our dry ingredients together? Clumps. Absolutely. Tell me why clumps are a death knell for biscuits specifically. True, but why specifically biscuits? If I'm making cookies, if I got clumps in my batter, I can generally sort that out. There it is, say it again, Emmy. I can't mix too much. If I find clumps in my batter, Generally, if I'm doing uh, like a creaming method, if I'm mixing it, then I can just keep on mixing until I work out all those clumps. It's a pain in the butt, but I can do it. With a biscuit, I do not have that luxury. I need to mix this as little as possible. So sift it all out, get those clumps out. Then we're gonna cut our shortening into dry ingredients, and we're gonna mix those thoroughly. That's gonna look a little bit like sandy grits. If they're not mixing their biscuits this way, then they're doing it wrong. Although I wonder if Popeyes just sort of like, they probably get frozen biscuits delivered to the store and they just. So like put it in the oven. They're good with honey. They're good with honey. I mean, I, I like the Popeyes biscuits. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not too fancy. After I got my, my crumbly texture with my shortening added to my dry ingredients, what's next? I'm gonna mix my liquid ingredients in. And again, licks only long enough to incorporate them evenly. How can I tell just by sight if something's being incorporated evenly? Not so much if you do. It's homogenized. It's gonna have an even color throughout. Homogenized? We cannot do this again. Uh, as soon as I turn off this camera, you can tell me how I pronounce something wrong, okay? What is Deal? Homogenized? All the same. I feel like that's not how you say it. Oh, Lord. Okay. I promise, I promise. We will have an in depth uh, discussion about the, uh, the pronunciation of homogenized as soon as I turn off this camera, okay? Alright, there's two distinct methods I can use to portion out my biscuits. Number one, is I can just, as soon as I get my batter, I can just get a, a, a portion scoop and I can scoop those fellas right on there. As a southerner, that's my preferred method. I want my biscuit to be a little ugly. I want to look clumpy. I want to look messy. I love that. Or I can take my dough, I can roll it out. Again, don't want to roll too much. And then I can take a pastry cutter and cut out even little circles. Not, not, my, pre not my preference. I like a biscuit with, uh, with personality. Place biscuits on a grease pan or a parchment line sheet in the slab. Always using parchment. We're not going to add any more uh, any more grease. That's going to affect our texture, affect our flavor. And now we're going to bake them. Big thing here is biscuits should be nearly double in height and have a pleasing golden brown finish. 
So I can try to do that based on instinct, but there is a way that I can guarantee that I get that beautiful color and that beautiful texture on my biscuits every time. Who knows that is? Just time and temperature the right way. Time and temperature the right way, for sure. Absolutely. But I'm looking for something else. How can I make sure that I get a beautiful golden complexion on my biscuits every time? I can apply a wash. <laughs> I can apply a wash, either an egg wash or a butter wash. All that is, is I either have melted butter or I have uh, firmly whipped eggs. And I'm gonna take one of my pastry brushes and I'm gonna brush them gently over the top before I bake them. That's gonna give me a little bit of sheen, a little bit of color, a little bit of texture, and it's gonna be BEA beautiful. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is all. Oh, no, not all for today. That's all for the, uh, the presentation. I really understood this topic. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best teacher. Come on, say it. Clap! Big break.